ಸಾಹಿತ್ಯಂ ಭೂತಲೆ ಶ್ರೀಮತೆ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ನಿಥಿನಾಮಿನೆ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸಾರಸ್ವತೆ ದೇವೇ ಗೌರವಾಣಿ ಪ್ರಚಾರಿಣೆ ನಿರ್ವಿಶೇಷ ಶೂನ್ಯವಾದಿ ಪಾಶ್ಚಾತ್ಯ ದೇಶತಾರಿಣೆ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧರ ಶ್ರೀವಾಸಾದಿ ಗೌರ ಭಕ್ತ ಬೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ ಒನ್ಸ್ ಅಗೇನ್ ಐ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ಫಾರ್ ಟುಡೇಸ್ ಭಗವದ್ಗೀತಾ ಸಿಂಪ್ಲಿಫೈಡ್ ಸೀರೀಸ್ ಸೆಷನ್ ವಿ ಹವ್ ಬಿನ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸಿಂಗ್ ದಿ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಭಗವದ್ಗೀತಾ ಸಿನ್ಸ್ ಮೆನಿ ವೀಕ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಟುಡೇ ವಿ ಶಾಲ್ ಬಿ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸಿಂಗ್ ಸರ್ಟನ್ ವರ್ಸಸ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದಿ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಅಲಾಂಗ್ ವಿತ್ ದಿ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಪರ್ಪೋರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಅರೌಂಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ಥೀಮ್ ಫ್ರಸ್ಟ್ರೇಷನ್ ಡೀ ಕೋಡೆಡ್ ಸೊ ವಿದೌಟ್ ಮಚ್ ಡಿಲೇ ಲೆಟ್ಸ್ ಬಿಗಿನ್ I would like to dedicate today's session to our beloved spiritual master, His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada. So what are the verses we are going to discuss today? First, I will read out the verses along with their translations. And then we shall get into the details. You can also recite the shlokas along with me. <clears throat> Verse 1.28 Arjuna Uvacha ದೃಷ್ಟೇಮಂ ಸ್ವಜನ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಯುಯುತ್ಸು ಸಮುಪಸ್ಥಿತ ಸೀದಂತಿ ಮಮ ಗಾತ್ರಿ ಮುಖಂ ಚ ಪರಿಶುಷ್ಯತಿ ದ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಲೇಷನ್ ಗೋಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದಿಸ್ ಅರ್ಜುನ ಸೆಟ್ ಮೈ ಡಿಯರ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಸೀಯಿಂಗ್ ಮೈ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ರಿಲೇಟಿವ್ಸ್ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟ್ ಬಿಫೋರ್ ಮೀ ಇನ್ ಸಚ್ ಎ ಫೈಟಿಂಗ್ ಸ್ಪಿರಿಟ್ ಐ ಫೀಲ್ ದ ಲಿಮ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೈ ಬಾಡಿ ಕ್ವಿವರಿಂಗ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಮೈ ಮೌತ್ ಡ್ರಾಯಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ So this describes Arjuna's situation on the battlefield. Text 29. Vepatushcha sharire me roma harshascha jayate Gandivam samsrate hastat mukham chaiva muk tvak chaiva paridahyate Arjuna continued. My whole body is trembling and my hair is standing on end. my bow gandiva is slipping from my hand and my skin is burning text 30 na cha shaknom yavasthatum bhramati vachame manah nimittani cha pashyami viparitani keshava arjuna said i am now unable to stand here any longer i am getting sorry i am forgetting myself and my mind is reeling i foresee only evil o killer of the keshi demon text 31 na cha shreyo nu pashyami hatva swajana mahave na kankshe vijayam krishna na chan rajyam sukha nicha i do not see how any good can come from killing my own kinsmen in this battle nor can i my dear krishna desire any subsequent victory kingdom or happiness text 32 kim no rajena govinda kim bhoga ir jivite nava yesha marthe kankshitam no rajyam bhoga sukha nicha ta ime vasthita yuddhe pranam styaktva dhana nicha ಆಚಾರ್ಯ ಪಿತರ ಪುತ್ರ ತಥೈವ ಚ ಪಿತಾಮಹ ಮಾತುಲ ಶ್ವಶುರ ಪೌತ್ರ ಶ್ಯಾಲ ಸಂಬಂಧಿ ನಸ್ತಾನ್ನ ಹಂತುಮಿಚ್ಛಾಮಿ ಘ್ನತೋಪಿ ಮಧುಸೂದನ ಅಪಿತ್ರೈಲೋಕ್ಯ ರಾಜ್ಯ ಹೇತೋ ಕಿಂನು ಮಹೀಕೃತೆ ನಿಹತ್ಯ ಧಾರ್ತರಾಷ್ಟ್ರಾನ್ನ ಕಾ ಪ್ರೀತಿ ಜನಾರ್ದನ ದಿಸ್ ಫೋರ್ ವರ್ಸಸ್ ಆರ್ ಕಂಬೈನ್ ಟುಗೆದರ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ದೇ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಎ ಕಂಬೈನ್ಡ್ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ ಇಯರ್ ಲೆಟ್ ಸಿ ದ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಲೇಷನ್ ಅರ್ಜುನ ಸೆಡ್ ಓ ಗೋವಿಂದ ಆಫ್ ವಾಟ್ ಅವೇಲ್ ಟು ಅಸ್ ಆರ್ ಕಿಂಗ್ಡಮ್ಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪಿನೆಸ್ ಆರ್ ಈವನ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಇಟ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ವೆನ್ ಆಲ್ ದೋಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಹೂಮ್ ವಿ ಮೇ ಡಿಸೈಯರ್ ದೆಮ್ ಆರ್ ನೌ ಅರೇಡ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಬ್ಯಾಟಲ್ ಫೀಲ್ಡ್ O Madhusudana, when teachers, fathers, sons, grandfathers, maternal uncles, fathers-in-law, grandsons, 
brothers in law and all relatives are ready to give up their lives and properties and are standing before me then why should i wish to kill them though i may survive o maintainer of all creatures janardana i am not prepared to fight with them even in exchange for this for the three worlds let alone this earth so these are the verses that we are going to discuss today so these verses portray the uh, response of arjuna we have discussed in the previous session that krishna the chariot driver who played the chariot driver role for arjuna was asked by arjuna to park the chariot in between the two armies and krishna parks the chariot he stations the chariot just near the kuru elders bhishma drona and all such elderly persons and when arjuna sees all of these elderly persons his relatives all of them standing ready to fight at that time arjuna uh, becomes overwhelmed with family sentiments he becomes he remembers all the time that he had spent with his uh, with his relatives especially his elders namely bhishma deva his grandfather and dronacharya his uh, dear his dear uh, guru who taught him the military warfare so when see when he sees all of them he becomes emotionally overwhelmed and he comes up uh, to krishna and says i think we should not fight this battle remember arjuna was uh, very capable very powerful you know so his aptitude in war was unquestionable but he became uh, very weak internally because of uh, sentimental feelings so that is the highlight of these verses let us try to understand getting into details we shall read certain uh, passages from the bhagavad gita itself and let's try to understand this was the first verse that we read where uh, arjuna is saying to krishna all my friends and relatives are present in front of me in a very fight in a great fighting spirit and seeing this the first thing that happens to arjuna is his limbs are quivering and his mouth is drying up so let's see what is this so arjuna is being compassionate even towards his enemies let's read this as such arjuna just after seeing the kinsmen friends and relatives on the battlefield was at once overwhelmed by compassion for them who had no who had so decided to fight against themselves as far as his soldiers are concerned he was sympathetic from the beginning but he felt compassion even for the soldiers of the opposite party foreseeing their imminent death and so thinking the limbs of the body began quiver and his mouth became dry you know sometimes if you have to face a very difficult situation let's say somebody is uh, feeling himself very low and he has to face an interview at that time you may experience such quivering of the bodily limbs hands and legs shaking and the mouth drying up even though you might have prepared very well for the interview uh, you know you have prepared very well but still uh, that particular point of time you become very anxious very nervous you might have experienced this isn't it even during the examination hall sometime we go maybe the first time we are facing the board exams that time we feel uh, we feel very nervous that is exactly what is happening to arjuna but then the highlight of the fact here that arjuna is being compassionate towards the warriors who are ready to kill him that shows arjuna's uh, uh, you know arjuna's uh, special qualification because he was a devotee he was a saintly person 
even though he was a warrior in heart he was a saintly person he was a devotee because of that he had such compassion even towards the enemies in this connection we can remember the statement of jesus christ in the bible jesus christ when he was put on the cross you know he was suffering excruciating pain even in such a situation jesus christ did not utter a word of curse against those tormentors but instead he turned towards the sky and he prayed to god he said oh lord please forgive them for they know not what they do just imagine, just see the broad mindedness of jesus christ he is asking the lord to forgive the offenses of those people who have put him into trouble this is the heart of a really a uh, spiritual person a spiritualist is a very tender hearted person and at the cost of giving trouble to others he does not want to become happy he does not want to uh, secure his own enjoyment that is what arjuna is displaying here now but there is a dark side of this the dark side of this is arjuna is forgetting his duty as a kshatriya his foremost duty was to fight for dharma and that too because it is sanctioned by the supreme lord krishna himself arjuna should not have actually uh, uh, thought twice he should have simply gone ahead and fought the battle but still by by krishna's arrangements arjuna is now under illusion because he is representing all of us in this world who are also who also come under illusion we all come under illusion so what should be done uh, when we come under illusion how do we get out of this uh, uh, illusion uh, for that we need to do just what arjuna did as we are going to see in the second chapter of the bhagavad gita arjuna not being able to find a solution to his problems not being able to resolve the conflicts in his mind he decides to surrender to krishna and seek guidance from him that's the best thing that arjuna did and he is teaching us by his own example that we should seek the knowledge of the bhagavad gita whenever we are uh, in crossroads this chapter the first chapter of the bhagavad gita is called observing the armies on the battlefield of kurukshetra this chapter is also called arjuna vishada yoga the lamentation of arjuna on the battlefield arjuna such a powerful man such a military uh, well trained warrior he is lamenting now this shows that how uh, more than our physical apt- physical uh, aptitude our mental well being is so very important if we are not emotionally strong if we are not mentally strong then all our uh, bodily strength cannot come to our rescue and more than even higher than mental strength is the spiritual strength which is highlighted in the bhagavad gita and as we uh, enter into the second chapter that becomes very evident let's continue display of soft heartedness this we have already discussed but i would like to read it for all of you he was more or less astonished to see their fighting spirit practically the whole community all blood relatives of arjuna had come to fight with him this overwhelmed a kind a kind hearted uh, devotee like arjuna although it is not mentioned here still one can easily imagine that not only were arjuna's bodily limbs quivering and his mouth drying up but that he was also crying out of compassion such symptoms in arjuna were not due to weakness but due to his soft heartedness a characteristic of a pure devotee of the law right arjuna was soft hearted because of his saintly nature because of his being a devotee the next verse arjuna continues to talk about uh, the transformations that happen that, ha- that are happening in his body his body is trembling his hair standing on end his famous bow gandiva 
slipping from his hand and his skin burning. Now, Arjuna is saying, my hand is, my hairs are standing on end. We say it's called, it's called goosebumps, isn't it? There are two kinds of goosebumps. Let's see what is that. There are two kinds of trembling of the body and two kinds of standings of the hair on the end. Such phenomena occur uh, either in great spiritual ecstasy or out of great fear under material conditions. There is no fear in transcendental realizations. Arjuna's symptoms in this situation are out of material fear, namely loss of life, situation, loss of life, sorry. This is evident from other symptoms also. He became so impatient that his famous bow Gandiva was slipping from his hands. And because his heart was burning within him, uh, he was feeling a burning sensation of the skin. All these are due to a material conception of life. Very nicely, Srila Prabhupada is explaining here in this purport. Two times, you know, there are two ways of, uh, in two situations, we may feel ex really excited, you know, hair standing on the end experience. One is when somebody is, uh, has reached a very high level of spiritual uh, happiness. We call it as ecstasy. Uh, you might have heard about Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was a great pure devotee of the Lord, but he was also an incarnation of Krishna who appeared about 500 years ago in this very Kali Yuga to show by his personal ex example how to uh, become a devotee of the Lord. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when he used to chant the holy names of the Lord, sing and chant the Hare Krishna mantra and dance, he would become very ecstatic and his hair would stand on end and there would be tears of ecstasy rolling down his cheeks and he would dance for hours together because of his love for Krishna. Now that is one kind of a uh, ecstasy, one kind of a goosebumps. Now, there's another kind that Arjuna is now experiencing. He is also experiencing standing of the hair on, his, on, the, on their ends. But uh, that is not because of the spiritual ecstasy, but that is because of uh, a fear of uh, future, fear of the unknown. Oh, what will happen if I kill all my relatives on the battlefield? Is this right thing for me to do? Will I get implicated? How the, what will be the implications of this war? Just because of my own uh, enjoyment, should I recklessly go and kill all those people? And what will happen to their wives? Their wives will all become widows, shelterless, and their children will have no fathers. So these are all some things which are troubling the mind of Arjuna. And it is rightful for Arjuna to think all of these. Because before taking any decision, before taking any action, an intelligent person will always think about the pros and cons, the positives and negatives. So just by imagining what could be the possible uh, uh, effects of this war, outcomes of this war, Arjuna is becoming full of fear. And because of this, all these experiences he is going through his hair standing on the end, his heart, his skin is burning and, uh, you know, all of these things. And towards the end of this chapter, it is also said Arjuna was crying. There were tears in his eyes. You know, such a powerful man can also cry. Now, that's because of the situation in which he is placed into. Now, this, uh, because of uh, being a soft-hearted devotee, Arjuna is going through all this. He could have simply said, might is right. I have the power and I can easily defeat all these Kaurava warriors on the battlefield and I can become uh, the king, the ruler. He could have just said that. But he is not such a kind of a person because a true spiritualist, uh, he is a soft-hearted person. He thinks twice before acting. Right? Let's move ahead. Yes, our situations 
is no different currently also you know um, especially because as you can see here in the cartoon uh, too many thoughts reeling mind is reeling arjuna said right mind is reeling too many thoughts in our head disturbing us many of the thoughts are planted into our head through the media the social media etc and uh, we become very disturbed we don't know what to do we are in such a situation as though we are lost in the forest that means we are also just like arjuna not knowing what to do we know there is a problem and we know why this problem has been caused to a certain extent uh, but we are not able to get out of it just like arjuna mm -hmm. okay the next verse arjuna is further saying i'm not able to stand here any longer and i'm forgetting myself my mind is reeling i foresee only evil oh keshava keshava is the name of krishna which refers to his being the killer of the keshi demon so man nimittani cha pashyami vipareetani keshava that means you arjuna had a certain kind of an expectation on the battlefield but he when when he went on the battlefield vipareetani opposite of what he expected he is foreseeing nimittani cha pashyami i only foresee uh uh you know uh, evil i was seeing i was thinking that very happily i'll go on the battlefield i'll kill all those enemies and become the warrior become the king of the whole world but now when i actually come and see on the battlefield my relatives who have who have uh, come on the battlefield i only foresee evil now he is also referring to krishna with a special name here keshava keshava refers to the one who killed the keshi demon Now, why is Arjuna referring to Krishna as Keshi? Uh, I mean, Keshava here. Krishna is an expert in killing the demons. We know. We know. We have heard many stories and pastimes of Krishna. Krishna, right from his childhood, he killed many demons. Now, Arjuna is specifically requesting Krishna, my dear Krishna, you have killed the Keshi demon in the past. Now, these demoniac doubts have entered into my mind. and because of which my mind is reeling now can you please kill these demoniac doubts just like you killed keshava sorry just like you killed keshi demon earlier now can you please kill the demons of doubts and negativities which have entered into my mind that is the import behind addressing krishna as keshava in this verse let us read this what causes bewilderment why do we get bewildered at times even though we may have all the required skills arjuna had those skills uh, as a warrior but still he got bewildered why let's see this due to his impatience arjuna was unable to stay on the battlefield and he was forgetting himself on account of the weakness of his mind excessive attachment for material things puts a man in a bewildering condition of existence bhayam dvitiya abhinevishata sya such fearless fearfulness and loss of mental equilibrium take place in persons who are too affected by material conditions arjuna envisioned only unhappiness in the battlefield he would not be happy even by gaining victory over the foe very nicely it is explained here what is the cause of bewilderment why do we get bewildered in our at different points in our life the root cause is excessive attachment to material things when we become possessive about results of our action when we become too much worried about what will be the result and especially thinking that i am the cause of the result and i am responsible and i have to get these results for my enjoyment for my pleasure no when this is the central point that is driving us in all our actions the result is bewilderment kamopa bhoga parama ethavat iti nischitaha so those who think that material enjoyment is the goal of life they keep this as their goal in life and do all their activities material pleasure is the goal of life 
for such people uh, uh, they only chintam aparimeyam cha pralaya pralayantam upashritah krishna says this in the 16th chapter of the bhagavad gita those who make material pleasure as the goal in their life those who don't have any other higher purpose in life beyond material things hmm? those who don't understand the spiritual value of life such people they are always in a state of anxiety and bewilderment who is the cause for this they themselves because of ignorance about spiritual reality they bring this bewilderment upon themselves so when we are too overwhelmed with material uh, things material enjoyment material attachment you see arjuna was constantly thinking in terms of his bodily relationship with those people who had come to fight against him he was only driven by the bodily concept of life because of this he became very much perturbed he became impatient bewildered not knowing what to do such a great warrior arjuna who was so powerful he could have actually fought the battle so nicely and he would have emerged victorious he would become the hero and his cause of fighting was also justified because he was fighting for the sake of dharma but still these bodily concept of life the bodily conceptions of life put him into a state of bewilderment so there are a lot of people we have seen also in bollywood and many in many other in you know many other uh, uh, many other walks of life people who have achieved a great success in their career they would be in the pinnacle of their career but they go through depression they go through uh, some kind of a uh, they don't know what is what what went wrong one fine day they get up in the morning and they dis- they see that oh what is this kuch maza nahi aa raha hai you know i was doing so many things all these days people are also appreciating that i am so good i have got awards i am in the pinnacle of my career but there is some kind of a lacuna in my life you know why this lacuna comes this kind of a emptiness is experienced when we don't understand the spiritual reality of life when we don't understand that i am actually not this body i am spirit soul when we are bereft of this knowledge the result is emptiness in life even though you would have achieved so many things in your material career without spiritual knowledge we are actually incomplete that is why the vedic scriptures urge us athato brahma jignyasa now that you have come to the human form of life you have to ask relevant inquiries about spiritual knowledge you have to gain spiritual knowledge without spiritual knowledge if we are simply busy with our material activities the result will be uh, a big chaos result will be emptiness lack of purpose in life so in that way arjuna was experiencing that lack of purpose in life isn't it so he was completely bewildered and not only on the his bewilderment was displayed visibly on the bodily platform when his hands were shaking his bow gandiva slipped away from his hands and he was continuously sweating and tears were rolling down his eyes all of these things you see this is what can happen to anybody so the bhagavad gita is beginning uh, with this anybody can get bewildered in this world any point of time just like arjuna therefore what did arjuna do to get out of this bewilderment is the most important thing that we should learn and apply in our life now all these things are observed by krishna and krishna is not ans- saying anything now in the first chapter krishna does not speak at all uh, he just listens to the entire thing that arjuna is speaking and only when arjuna requests krishna to instruct him does krishna instruct that also shows a very important thing krishna respects our individuality he respects our choices he respects our free will that is why krishna does not interfere uh, with anyone unless that person asks krishna to interfere so this is the very special thing that we see in the bhagavad gita 
So the reason behind frustration, let us see this. The word nimitta is significant. When a man sees only frustration in his expectations, he thinks, why am I here? Everyone is interested in himself and his own welfare. No one is interested in the supreme self. Arjuna is supposed to show disregard for self-interest by submission to the will of Krishna, who is everyone's real self-interest. The conditioned soul forgets this and therefore suffers material pains. Arjuna thought that this victory in the battle would be only a cause of lamentation for him. See, this negativity is like a whirlpool. It sucks you. First of all, you have a negative uh, uh, outlook. Then you think that the result of this activity will also be negative. That's what Arjuna is thinking. Hmm? Arjuna only saw frustration, frustration and frustration. Nothing else. Hmm? Now, the reason for this is uh, not being aware about your relationship with the Supreme Lord. You are the individual self and there is the supreme self. We have a relationship between the individual self and the supreme self. And human life is specially meant to realize that relationship, to live in that relationship. Now, when we don't worry about that relationship with the supreme Lord, the result is uh, frustration, emptiness, Lack of purpose in life. That is what Arjuna was going through. And believe me, it's a very, very serious thing. It's, it may appear to us to be very simple. But if you look at from Arjuna's perspective, it was like the whole world is empty for him. Why should we even fight? He's asking. You know, why, why should we fight? Let me give up this. You know, in fact, in, at one point of time, Arjuna says, I'm ready to become a beggar. I'm ready to beg and maintain myself and my family members. I don't want to fight this war. To such a state of frustration, Arjuna reaches to. Right? Let's continue. Uh, yes. Here again, Arjuna is saying, I don't see any how any good can happen to me by killing my own relatives on this battle. My dear Krishna, uh, I don't desire any subsequent victory, kingdom or happiness. I don't want any of these things. Now, on one side, it may look that, oh, Arjuna is so detached. He doesn't want kingdom, victory, happiness. Look at this person. He's so detached. He has become, you know, our general understanding about a sannyasi. You know, sannyasi is a person who has given up everything. I don't want anything. So, so Krishna should have praised Arjuna. No, oh, you have become a sannyasi. Such a nice, renounced person you have become. No, but Krishna is not happy with this kind of a renunciation. This is not renunciation. Because it is going to be against the nature of Arjuna. Arjuna's nature is that he is a Kshatriya. And his nature will drive him to act in a certain way. He cannot simply run away from his situation and say that I have become so renounced. Even if he goes to some other place, his mind and senses under the influence of the Kshatriya spirit will force him to act or act or uh, you know enter into a battle in some other place so there are some some people who say that you know i'll give up everything and i'll go to himalayas and i'll sit there and uh, i'll do some meditation if your senses are not in your control uh, even if you go to himalayas you cannot actually uh, fulfill your purpose so on the other hand if your senses are under full control even amidst all opulences, even amidst all disturbing situations, you can be well situated. Therefore, don't be so much interested in changing your externals. Most importantly, we have to work on our internal environment, on controlling our mind. These are the things that Krishna is going to talk about in the future. Uh, because Arjuna is saying that I'll run away from this battlefield. He thinks that if I, if I change this situation, then I'll become happy. I don't want to get into this situation. That's what Arjuna is thinking. Let's read this part. Self-sustaining appetite for action. Without knowing that one's self-interest is in Vishnu or Krishna, conditioned souls are attracted by bodily relationships, 
hoping to be happy in such situations. Under delusion, they forget that Krishna is also the cause of material happiness. Arjuna appears to have even forgotten the moral codes for a Kshatriya. Arjuna is reluctant even to kill his enemies, let alone his relatives. He thought that by killing his kinsmen, there would be no happiness in his life and therefore he was not willing to fight. Just as a person who does not feel hunger is not inclined to cook. Very nice analogy given by Srila Prabhupada. So, first of all, uh, why is Arjuna or why do we generally get into such state of uh, mind? When we don't know that our real self-interest is to serve God, is to follow the orders of God, then we become fully bewildered. Nate viduhu swartha gathim hi vishnum. The Bhagavatam says, uh, when people do not know that their real self-interest is in Vishnu or Krishna, then uh, they get attracted to so many material conceptions and because of which their consciousness is pulled down and they get degraded. So therefore, reawakening our original relationship with God is the key to all problems in this material world, which arise because of material conception. So Arjuna should have understood that Krishna is the one, God is the one who is going to give me happiness. He is going to sanction happiness to me. And he has got a plan. He is telling me to fight this battle. That means he would have already made sure what is good for me, what is not good for me. Arjuna, Krishna should have, Krishna would have already thought about it. Now, why should I even worry about it? Arjuna should have thought in these lines. But being bewildered by his own material conceptions, Arjuna was not able to think in this way. See, the whole point in Bhagavad Gita is when we surrender ourselves to the will of God, we can be rest assured that everything that is happening in our life is according to God's sanction. And God knows best what is good for me. God is more intelligent than me. He knows what is good for me. So therefore, the, uh, the right approach is to surrender to the will of God or Krishna and act according to his instructions then we can become truly happy in any situation. A person who is surrendered to the law is happy in any situation because he knows that Krishna or God is giving protection to me in all situations. And sometimes he may sanction miseries to me, but that is also his way to purify me. Just like you go to a doctor, doctor, let's say you've got a fever or something, you go to the doctor, Apparently, doctor causes miseries to you by, you know, asking you to take some bitter medicine or giving you an injection, which is actually causing pain. But that pain is actually meant to cure us of our disease. So even though a devotee might go through some difficulties, some problems in his life, uh, a devotee knows that these are all sanctioned by Krishna only for my own purification. So let me better go through these problems uh, with a spiritual vision. So this uh, makes the devotee happy or satisfied in all circumstances. So Arjuna somehow was missing this point and we are also missing this point currently in our life and that is the root cause of all sufferings or miseries. This is pointed out by the Bhagavad Gita and the Bhagavatam. So finally, the last few verses where Arjuna is saying, I don't want all of these riches, this kingdom, this happiness. Forget about the earthly kingdom. I don't even want swarga. I don't even want heavenly pleasures. If I'm getting all these things at the cost of killing my relatives. Now his justification is, why do, we, why do people generally want a lot of property, wealth, money and all of these things? Because they want to show this off. They want to enjoy this in the company of their relatives. Now, if relatives themselves are not there, if they are going to be killed on the battlefield, what is the use of securing all of these riches, this kingdom, all of these things? It's, a, it's of no use. That is what Arjuna is saying. So Arjuna has got a justification. 
the relatives for whom we work so hard and secure all these material opulences if they themselves are going to be killed how can i alone in, alone enjoy how can i enjoy alone all of these wealth kingdom happiness this is what his uh, this is exactly the material uh, view point that generally people have let's read this last part Arjuna has addressed Lord Krishna as Govinda because Krishna is the object of all pleasures for cows and the senses. By using this significant word, Arjuna indicates that what will satisfy his senses. Although Govinda is not meant for satisfying our senses, if we try to satisfy the senses of Govinda, then automatically our own senses are satisfied. Materially, everyone wants to satisfy his senses and he wants god to be the order supplier for such satisfaction the lord will satisfy the senses of the living entities as much as they deserve but not to the extent that they may covet but even one but when one takes the opposite way namely when one tries to satisfy the senses of govinda without desiring to satisfy one's own senses then by the grace of govinda all desires of the living entity are satisfied see kim no rajyena govinda that is what arjuna is asking what is the use of this rajya this kingdom oh govinda so krishna is addressed by a name here govinda one who gives pleasure to the senses go means senses go also means cows krishna gives pleasure to the cows and to the senses now uh, we all want pleasure for our senses but the way we are trying to become uh, to satisfy the senses that is wrong that is leading to frustration now our sen we are part and parcel of god therefore our senses are also part and parcel of krishna's senses now when we try to satisfy our senses uh, separately independently uh, then we lead it leads to frustration but understanding our relationship with krishna when we try to act the way krishna wants us to act for his satisfaction when we try to do our activities then in that process we also derive complete satisfaction that is the secret that people do not know in this world you see just because of one fact that people do not know that i am part and parcel of god people do not know this because of this so many other problems are coming up because i am part and parcel of god my happiness is not independent of god's happiness when i pour water to the roots of the tree automatically the entire parts of the tree become happy, nourished with water in the same way krishna is the root he is the source of everyone when we try to satisfy krishna or god then we also become happy or satisfied that is the import of the word govinda so uh, to conclude what we have discussed so far one can acquire desire divine qualities like arjuna namely universal compassion by establishing his relationship with god as we discussed because arjuna was uh, connected with krishna as a friend as a devotee therefore he had this divine quality of compassion he was compassionate even towards his enemies lord will satisfy the senses of the living entities as much as they deserve but not to the extent that they may covet so uh, whatever we desire the lord may not satisfy but whatever we deserve the lord will always give us provided we are connected with him fearfulness and loss of mental equilibrium take place in persons who are too affected by material conditions as we this we discussed in detail when we are too much involved in uh, material conception of life thinking that i am this body and thinking in terms of bodily relationships that will lead to fearless fearfulness and uh, loss of uh, mental equilibrium the thing which happened with arjuna cause of frustration is self centeredness everyone is interested in himself and his own welfare no one is actually interested in the real self interest that is the supreme self nate viduhu swartha gatim hi vishnu we have discussed this so we have to be if we want to achieve real happiness 
we have to be interested in our real self interest the real self interest is in carrying out the instructions of the supreme lord krishna we can overcome the reluctance to follow the moral codes by discovering our true self interest which is vishnu or krishna reservoir of complete satisfaction so this we have discussed already so these are some interesting points that we discussed in today's session i am very happy that all of you were patiently uh throughout the session we are listening i hope it was good now we shall uh, for one minute we shall chant the hare krishna mantra uh this hare krishna mantra chanting helps us to elevate our consciousness from the material plane to the spiritual plane so my request to all of you to please practice this mantra meditation every day uh this hare krishna maha mantra is most recommended for everyone to chant and meditate upon in this age of kali first we shall chant the panchatatva mantra please chant together it's displayed on the screen shri krishna chaitanya prabhu nityananda shri advaita gadadhara shri vasadi gaura bhakta vrinda this is the invocation prayer we chant this one time and then we chant audibly we have to utter the words so that we can hear our own sound and rest the mind on the sound and each time the mind goes there and here carefully bring the mind back on the sound vibration so let us chant together hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare hare hari ram hari ram 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 hari hari hare krishna hare krishna 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 hari hari hare ram hari ram 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 hari hari hare krishna hare krishna 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 hari hari hare ram hari ram 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 hari hari hare krishna hare krishna 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 hari hari hare ram hari ram 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 hari hari hare krishna hare krishna 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 hari hari hare ram hari ram 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 hari hari hare krishna hare krishna 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 hari hari hare ram hari ram 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 hari hari hare krishna hare krishna 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 hari hari hare ram hari ram 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 hari hari hare krishna hare krishna 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 hari hari hare ram hari ram 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 hari hari hare krishna hare krishna 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 hari hari hare ram hari ram 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 hari hari hare krishna hare krishna 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 hari hari hare ram hari ram 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 hari hari so please practice this mantra meditation every day make it part of your daily routine any time of the day you can do it whenever you are free you can do early ideally early in the morning if you do it is most effective but it doesn't matter any time of the day you can practice this mantra meditation and every day the students of indian institute of science they are uh, meeting online between 8 am and 10 am and they are doing this mantra meditation so it will be very nice if you can also join them the link for the meeting is uh, displayed on the screen right now so you can try out for one week just 5 minutes every day you can join them and experiment for yourself i'm sure you'll really feel good now you may say that i will do it myself but uh, to build up a habit it's not that easy but if you join this already uh, functioning group every day and do this mantra meditation with them it will be very easy for you to develop this uh, very good habit so please make a note of the link for the meeting which is displayed right now on the screen and now uh, we shall proceed towards q and a if you have any questions or comments based on what we discussed today uh, you can uh, raise your questions or comments at this point of time does anyone has uh, any question does anyone have any question prabhu Yes, who is Hello. this? Ankan, Ankan. Ankan, yes. Please tell me. Yeah. Okay. Nice, nice to have you back, Prabhu. After a long time, and uh, it was a very wonderful session. Like, oh, uh, thank you. Explained it so well. Yeah. Uh, I will ask one question. Hmm. Yes. So, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Please tell me, Ankan. Yeah. So, uh, want to uh, like. Have the or develop the relationship with the God, 
and then suppose you have some questions in your mind how do you know that uh, those questions are answered or how that questions will be answered by god very nice question very nice question the um, <clears throat> we all have an eternal relationship with god and god is seated in our heart as the witness of all our activities he is called as paramatma even now it is he only who is giving us directions intelligence remembrance to act in a certain way but when we become a devotee or when we actually uh, connect our ourselves with krishna through this process of hearing and chanting you can establish a relationship with krishna and when you reach a certain stage of purity in your relationship with krishna uh, krishna personally will dictate to you at every moment how you need to act how you need to act in a given particular situation this is very much possible divya gyan hridaya prakashita to say through the spiritual master he gives us instructions externally through his books through his instructions in the bhagavad gita when we start acting according to the instructions of bhagavad gita then uh, we become purified and then we can have direct connection with krishna who is seated in our heart and he can dictate to us he he will give us the right intelligence on how to act so it's a very uh, you know mystical process you cannot explain it through a flow chart or an algorithm but uh, when you practice it over a period of time you can experience it yourself you will see that beyond your limited capacity you can do things uh, you can handle situations that's all because of uh, krishna's reciprocation so therefore one single thing that i request you to stick on to is this chanting hare krishna mantra and hearing the bhagavad gita so these two things when you do especially the combination when you do these two things Uh, we can progress towards that stage which you are talking about hope that answers your question ankan yes thank you so much bro thank you anyone else has any other question yes uh, santosh santosh has raised yeah yeah this is a small uh, uh, expansion on a few terms that you used so what do you uh, generally mean by satisfaction of god or god yeah i mentioned already satisfaction of god means uh, acting in a way which he wants us to act that means following his instructions like for example in the bhagavad gita krishna says think about me always think about me become my devotee uh, follow so that means krishna says if you do this i shall reciprocate with you the relationship with god just like any other relationship is not a one sided relationship it is a two sided so when you want to connect with krishna when you want to connect with god there are certain things that he is telling please do this do this do this please try to avoid this 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 so first of all we must have the willingness to follow what he is saying now we may because of our conditioning or the past habits we may fall short we may not be able to do certain things but when we see uh, when krishna sees our sincerity in purpose to follow his instruction krishna will help us from within so the, the main thing when i said satisfying krishna means following his instructions trying our best within our limited capacity trying our best to follow what he is saying that is the meaning of satisfying krishna does that answer your question santosh mm mm-hmm. yeah yeah yes so what is the uh, preliminary instruction that one can follow to begin with yeah to so begin with as i said always keeping in touch with him keeping yourself in touch with him and uh, that keeping in touch with krishna is easily possible through the chanting of hari krishna mantra so if you ask me that one single thing that we should do every day to satisfy krishna or to be in touch with krishna to follow his instruction he is this chanting hare krishna mantra i am not saying this but the authorized scriptures are saying this right hare nama hare nama hare namaiva kevalam 
Kalau nasti eva nasti eva nasti eva gatiranyatha. It is said in this age of Kali, there is no other way, there is no other way, there is no other way other than chanting the Harinam, the chanting of the holy names of Krishna. So that is the one single thing that we should never miss uh, on a daily basis. Does that answer your question, Santosh? Mm -hmm, yes. Thank you. So all of you have been a wonderful audience today. You have uh, you have uh, tolerated me for the past one one hour. Very nice, uh, and also happy to see you back after such a long time, all of you. I hope all of you are doing well by Lord's grace. Uh, please do continue to chant Hare Krishna Mantra every day and being part of the Trans Dimensions Club activities. Hoping uh, to see all of you in offline sessions very soon in your campus. Let us see. Let us hope and pray for that. Thank you very much once again. Uh, let's meet again in the next session. Uh, there is a link here on the uh, screen display. Please give your valuable feedback about today's session on this link. This will, link will be displayed for the next one minute. Thank you very much once again. Hare Krishna.